In this demonstration, we are going to show you how to configure the query widget in Experience Builder with a spatial buffer, which will allow a user to click on a feature in the map and then run a buffer query at a specific distance and then receive a list of results of all of the features that intersect within that buffered distance from our selected feature. As you can see in this list, there are 32 features that are within 300 feet of the selected feature. And when I click on this drop down arrow, what you're going to see is exactly what I have configured in the web map layout. Now, there is a way to customize this differently, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. What you're also going to see is if I click on a feature from the list, my map view filters to show me that specific feature. So I can click around to see where these features are. Now, this is something that is configured within the actions of the query widget and not within the query settings. Another thing that you'll see is up here in the right hand corner is an actions button. When you click on actions, this is where you can go to export all to CSV. You can also export selected because as you can see, I have one feature selected. So you also have the option to just export those that you have selected. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit out of this to come back to Experience Builder. I am going to delete my, my query widget and start from the beginning. So over on the insert widget panel on the left hand side under the data centric options, you'll find the query widget. I'm going to pull the query widget into my canvas. And as you can see, the configuration panel has already opened on the right. And that's because when you pull a widget in, it is automatically selected. What you're also going to need to know is that I've already created this map and pulled it in and connected it to this map widget. So the data associated with it is already connected to this experience. So when I click on new query and I click to select data, you see my tutorials map is the option. So when I expand the tutorials map item, I can see the two layers that are a part of that map. One is the parcels layer and one is the roads layer. Now I clicked on the parcels layer and when I did that, all of the rest of the query settings came up. Now, what it means to be the data selected for the query widget is that this is the data set that populates your filtered, your, your featured list of your results. So the, this data set is what populates your resulting list. That's very important. I'm going to click on this label and I'm going to change it to public notification query. And down here at attribute filter, I'm going to turn that off because we are setting up only a spatial filter based on a buffer. Under the label, I am going to change this to say selection settings. And then under filter by, what I'm going to choose is selected features from data source. When I click here, I see this option to add a filter layer. Now, what this means is that whatever filter layer I add, that is the layer that you are going to select a feature within, and that is what the buffer is going to run against. So when I click on add filter layer, I get the options from my tutorials map again. And in the, in the demonstration that I showed you at the very beginning of this video, I only had the parcels as an option for that filter layer, but I'm going to also add the roads right now, just so I can show you what that looks like here in a little bit. You'll want to close this select filter layer data to get back to the options. And the next thing you need to configure are the spatial relationship rules. Now, when I click on this drop down, I could set multiple relationship rules. And whatever I select within this list is what my users will have the option of choosing at runtime. So I'm just going to leave these selected. And then down here, I'm going to click to enable buffer. And I am going to set the default to 300 feet. Regardless of what I set as the default distance and unit, my users are going to have the option to change both of those at runtime. I am going to click this arrow up here in the upper left to come back to my set query panel. 
And then down here, I'm going to expand the results options. Now, the demonstration I showed you at the very beginning showed you a feature list that was based on my web map settings. So that's the default here to use the web map settings, which means that it uses the configuration of your pop-ups for that layer within your web map. Because we've already seen what that looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click customize and we're gonna change it up. So I'm now going to click on this database symbol under the heading, and I'm going to choose to do my parcel number with a dash, and then I'm going to choose my property class description. And now because I'm putting that in the header, I'm gonna come down here to the display fields, and I'm gonna say, I don't wanna see parcel number there because it's in my heading, and I don't wanna see my, my property class description down in my fields list either because it's in the heading. So I'm going to leave that as it is, and I'm not going to set a sort field. I'm just going to say the settings are good as they are. I'm going to save, and then I'm going to preview my application. Now, when I preview the application and I click on this drop down for filter layer, you'll see that I now have the option to run the buffer against either my parcels or my roads. I am going to leave that on my parcels and then the relationship default has changed because I chose multiple. I want to use intersect. So I'm going to click on this drop down and I am going to choose intersect. As you can see, the, the relationship rules are now sorted alphabetically. So I'm going to click on intersect and I'm going to change my buffer distance to 500. I am going to click on a parcel within my map and then I'm going to apply that 500 distance buffer. Now, when I apply that, I get a result of 73 parcels that are within a 500 foot buffer distance from this parcel that I've selected. And now you can see that the header has the parcel number and the property class description. And when I click the drop down arrow, these are all the fields list that I selected to be visible. So it's no longer associated with the pop up configuration in my web map. When I click to select a feature from the list, you'll notice right away that it's not filtering that in the web map. So I'm gonna close out of this and with my query widget selected, I'm gonna go over here to the action options and I'm going to add a trigger. So my trigger is going to be when a record selection changes. So that means when a record is selected from that resulting features list, I want my map to filter. And right now the trigger data is set to the public notification query resulting list. So what I want that to say is the parcel that I select from this list, I want it to filter the parcel layer from my map based on a unique ID that matches in both of parcel number. So the resulting layer has my parcel number, and now I want my action data, which is the actual feature service layer in my map to filter, and the field they have in common with the unique IDs that they have in common is the parcel number from each. Now I'm going to save that, and I'm going to preview again. Now I'm going to select a different parcel. And I'm going to just run an intersect of 300 feet. I have 98 possible features. I'm going to click on this one. And now my map view does filter its view. And here is that feature right here. I'm going to choose a different one and we'll see that pop up right here. So that is how you can configure your map application to allow you to filter the map view by whatever record you've selected from your resulting list from your buffer query. If you've liked this demonstration, please click the like button below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates and new tutorials.